Good afternoon everyone. Shalako and I are going for a ride in the rain. We didn't think it was going to rain when we were saddling up. I mean it's been drizzling on an awful day but the shower's just come over. I'm pretty sure it's not going to last for very long. We're doing a solo ride today. He hasn't been out since our big ride last Saturday, I think it was. Come on. Good boy. Nearly every ride we do, we've been coming down this direction to get him better with the water crossings. Usually he would have already paused and snorted like way back there. Positive thoughts yet again. We're just going to get Cross to the other side. If you can see this bright green down here, that is blue green algae. And that's in our dam because it um, has been empty for years. And then just recently, back in January, it filled up. So the whole dam over there, which you can't see now, was covered in vegetation. And the vegetation has just been rotting away and it's been causing the blue-green algae to flare up. It's now coming down. Luckily my camera's waterproof. A little bit of rain didn't hurt anyone. It's okay. Oh boy. We're just going to do uh, either the bottom part of the Bunguna track, which is this part. This part is actually called the Gangaloo track which is the one we rode last weekend that went all the way around the dam but as you remember it, most of it was underwater over the other side so you have to do part of the Gangaloo track to get to the Bunguna track and the Bunguna track is also known as the 3 p.m. ride because I often finish work at 3 p.m. and it's just a nice short ride to get out and de-stress and get you back in time before dark. Okay, he's looking around a bit. I've applied my legs. I've applied a bit of pressure on the reins. I'm asking him to come back. There. He's a bit. Oh, he's a bit lucky today because he's out by himself and he has had been getting three rides a week but I've started back at work so time is a little bit of an issue I'm going for my first, not my very first, but my first dressage lesson since having him home. I'm going to try and get some video, but I don't know if it's going to be possible because I don't know if there's going to be anyone there that can video for me. So we'll just see what we can do. a little bit good boy it's the first time 
we've cantered more than two steps on the trail. Catherine will be proud. Okay. And we'll check this view out. Turn around, shall we go? pretty awesome when it's full and those mountains across there are where we were last weekend well I'm calling them mountains horses think they're mountains I know they're only hills but still makes you feel better come on looks like that oh there's a roo right in front of us bounding along the trail over there is the Mount Morgan stack you can see way over on the other hills where the red overburden is and that's the old Mount Morgan mine. It closed back in, I think, around 1990. And I think it was open from around the 1880s. It used to be underground and then they made it open cut. So in behind those overburden dumps and behind that stack is a huge pit that's a thousand feet deep and it's full of polluted water. Full of cyanide because that's what they used to do to separate the gold and they call it one and a half stroke lake because if a duck lands on it apparently they only get one and a half strokes before it kills them that red brick building right is the first high school to open in queensland and it was the first because it opened one day before all of the other high schools in queensland and that was back in i think it was 1912. prior to that it was like a tafe where they trained the mine workers. And here comes the other shower of rain. Come on, Shaliko. Mount Morgan is absolutely full of history. Like I said, it's a mining town from the 1880s. Gold and silver and copper. Apparently it was one of the richest producing mines. Um, I don't know if it was Queensland or Australia way back then. Mount Morgan used to consist of around 13,000 people back in its heyday. Currently, I think there's around two and a half thousand people. Also up over in the hills next to the, the uh, overburden dumps are what we call the fire clay caverns. And it was where they mined the clay out of the hills to turn into bricks to build the mine and all the buildings around the place. I don't even know what year that was, but that was a long time ago. And as they were mining the clay out of the caverns, they come across dinosaur footprints on the ceiling of the caverns. Ouch! That was a prickle bush. And the reason why they're on the ceiling is because they were mining into the hill and all of the clay and rock was dropping down as they were mining it out. The footprints were above on the ceiling because the top of the mountain or the top of the hill used to be the bottom of a lake. So they're actual imprints from when the dinosaurs walked over the top of the mountains, which weren't mountains back then very very cool it used to be open to the public as a tourism thing but they closed it because of the danger of the fire clay caverns roofs falling in occasionally i suppose that's a big danger but they're actually looking at trying to reopen it Hopefully realise it's not a big scary monster. Now he's allowed to put his head down, but he's not allowed to eat when he does it. There you go. Now I was saying. <laughs> oh dear, the fun today. Today's solo riding tip. It's about carrying your phone on you. It's really important to carry the phone on your person, whether it's one of those armbands or one of these phone pockets, like that one there. You can see my phone is in there. It's on you, on the person. So if you happen to fall off, 
whether you're conscious or unconscious, hopefully not unconscious, but if you fall off, you've got the phone on you. You can make your emergency call. Um, you can ask Siri or ask Google to call one of your contacts if you're not able to actually use the phone yourself, like use your hands. So it's important not to have the phone strapped to the horse, as in strapped to the saddle or in a saddle bag or one of those phone uh, carriers that wrap around the horn. Don't use them. Make sure it's on you. This actually happened to me nearly two years ago. I was thrown off and I had my phone in my phone pocket of my riding tights and I was knocked out but apparently when I came to that's the only thing I remember is reaching into my pocket grabbing my phone and asking Google to call my friend who lived up the road and I, I called her and all I said was I've had a fall can you sort my horse out <laughs> she didn't know where I was she called me back um, I did all of that and yet I can't really remember I did suffer um, concussion for about a week so that's a really really good take home tip keep your phone on you at all times we've had a few things going on today we just had those birds flying out from underneath his feet we had a kangaroo trotting and uh, jumping in front of the trail in front of him we had a fire that somebody had lit right in the middle of the trail that he didn't want to go past had our water crossing which isn't a drama at all anymore isn't that fantastic and he was just a little bit lucky because he's been out by himself but look at this we're home